A man by the name of Paul Begali was on CNN and they were discussing the Democrats and their performances and specifically this issue of voting rights is a legislation that they're trying to get passed. I want you to take a look at his abhorrent remarks and then I want to talk about it. Did President Biden put more effort into getting infrastructure passed, for example? Well, he he got infrastructure passed and that's a good thing because success can can breed success. He is putting the full force of the presidency behind it. I think the problem for the Democrats right now is, is not that they have bad leaders. They have bad followers. Wow. And I mean, that right there just gives you the whole thing. So he's asked, you know, did the Democrats put more effort into getting infrastructure passed? Well, first of all, infrastructure hasn't been passed yet. Now, there was an infrastructure bill that was passed. There's actually two separate infrastructure bills. We know the first one that got passed was like the standard bill. It was incredibly meager. It wasn't enough money, um, largely a corporate giveaway, which is why it got bipartisan support and it ultimately passed. OK, that's what he's talking about. That doesn't materially improve the lives of Americans the way this other bill that hasn't gotten passed yet and probably isn't going to get passed and is a shell of itself. I mean, on the face of things as it is right now, it, 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 it's not going to do that. And he's saying, well, he got the first bill passed. Well, Americans don't largely care about that because they're not going to immediately reap the benefits of it like they would have from the $3.5 trillion bill in its entirety. Once I, like I said once before, that bill is no more. But notice how he, I mean, look at this guy. He's just a run-of-the-mill hack. And this is what you get from Democrats, period, nowadays. Uh, Democratic strategists an actual Democratic politician, and even some that are nominally on the left. I mean, look at Pramila Jayapal. Look at how far she's fallen, you know, um, and some of the Justice Democrats, in fact. But so he says here, OK, well, they fought on getting infrastructure passed. No, they hadn't. No, they haven't. Like I said before, the first infrastructure bill got passed because it was largely a corporate giveaway. The second infrastructure bill, he's been getting slapped upside the head by Curzon Cinema and Joe Manchin hasn't done anything on that front. I mean, and it's not just them, it's other moderates that are in the House, maybe a few more we don't know about in the Senate. I mean, provision after provision have been stripped out of that thing and they haven't made any kind of uh, way whatsoever. That's not them fighting and they haven't been fighting at all. They haven't used any tactics that could actually maybe get these other moderates on board. And I'm not talking about just asking them and begging and pleading, no. You're the President of the United States pull up your britches and actually take on the fight. But he's not doing it, not only because he doesn't want to, but because he's corrupt. Like, you know, the vast majority of these uh, politicians typically are. But what I want to really talk about here is this blame, this reoccurring blame. I love this. He says, I think the problem for the Democrats right now is not that they have that they ha have bad leaders. No, Biden, Pelosi, Schumer, they're all fine Leaders, very strong and upstanding leaders, righteous leaders that stand for justice. They have bad followers. <sighs> Notice how he refers to Democratic voters, Democratic, the Democratic uh, constituency as followers. Followers. So now you're supposed to be a follower of a specific politician. You're a follower. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, it's this reoccurring theme. They're too good. They're too righteous. They're too great. Not only these media pundits that you see, like that jackass in that video I just played for you, but politicians in general. You know, every time they lose, they blame the base. And this is unique to the Democratic Party. This is unique to the Democratic Party. You know, um, Republicans de uh, demonize the Democrats, right? They demonize the other party. But the Democrats, they don't even demonize the Republicans. They demonize their own fucking base. I've never seen anything like this bullshit. This is amazing right here. <laughs> I mean, you would think he'd go, oh, you know, it's the other side or it's this particular individual. Fuck no. He throws the blame right into the face of those whose votes he and many others are going to be asking for later on in the year. And when it rolls, the next presidential election rolls around in 2024. I mean, they hang themselves. They do it themselves. I mean, it's incredible to watch, really. I mean, this constant browbeating and gaslighting. And the reason we don't have a national health service is because of you. It's me. It's you. It's every other normal American. It's our fault. 
because we didn't do something. Either we didn't vote or we're just not patient or we're just, it's always on us, isn't it? It's always on us. Even if you're not, um, you know, no, no matter what your political affiliation is, you know what I mean? Um, I don't consider myself a loyal Democrat follower. I mean, or whatever the fuck this guy would consider um, the people who it is that he's referencing or talking to. But if you care about anything, you know, uh, these politicians, they'll always point to you and your neighbor as to, you know, why progress isn't getting done when they're the people that are actually, or I'm sorry, they're not drafting the legislation. It's Walmart, it's the CEO, it's the big banks, it's the military industrial complexes that are uh, drafting the legislation, you know, the pharmaceutical industries. We know who really runs the government. But this guy, just no kind of remorse at all. And look how he says it with that smug look on his face, just blaming the constituency or, or the followers. And like I said, they're going to come out later on in the year and ask for these same people that he's blaming to vote for them. I, I mean, it's amazing stuff, isn't it? It's amazing stuff. I mean, Joe Biden has a 33% approval rating right now. 33% approval rating. The lack of self-reflection among these people is astounding. It's on a level that I honestly can't explain. I think I would have to go and fish out an actual psychologist, a person that really knows about the human mind, the brain, and the different emotions that could maybe then at least scratch the surface on the type of bullshit these people are on. I mean, this is amazing. 33% approval rating. His lowest approval rating, which is 33%, which is what it is right now, is lower than what Donald Trump's was at its lowest, which was 34%. Yet, you have people around Joe Biden telling him that, oh, the reason why it's so low is uh, you've gone too far left. You're, doing, you're too progressive. What has he done? He's done what Democrats always do, which is neoliberalism which is this style of politics that's been entirely destructive to the country and to working people across this country. I mean, it's class warfare is what they're promoting right now. But their solution is, oh, he's being too progressive. And then they come out and they blame the Democratic followers. My God, I'm, I've never seen anything like it. I don't, I mean, I think you'd have to get a psychologist to explain the deranged mental state of people like Mr. Paul Begala that would say absolutely egregious bullshit like this. I mean, I'm struggling to find the words to really put this into perspective, but hopefully you understand. I mean, this is unlike anything I've ever seen. They don't have bad leaders. So when your leaders are corrupt, when your leaders are taking money from this, that, and the third, when your leaders jump out and oppose legislation that would benefit the uh, people that they've committed to serve, which they actually don't serve, they just serve their donors, right? When your leaders do all that shit, no, they aren't bad people. The leaders are great. Amazing leaders. It's you. It's me. It's you. It's your mother, your uncle, your sister, your brother, your grandma. It's all of us, okay? The ones that have to live with their decisions. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. I tell you, I, this. I'm not going to make it to see the age of 30. I, I'm really not. Honestly, 25 is looking bleak at this point because... When I hear shit like this, man, I'm telling you, it takes years off of my life. It really does.